Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is July 23rd, 2023. Hope this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good, feeling pretty great. That's right, dare I say great. Uh, let's see, a lot of food to get into, so I guess we'll just kind of start. Uh, I went to Northside on Saturday, had a fun time. I was walking with the with the homies, and we were trying to figure out, you know, what we wanted to eat, and actually, we, we knew what we wanted to eat, but... We were going to go to the, you know, the usual chameleon place, but the, the kitchen was closed. So it's like, oh, no, what do we do? So, you know, we're trying to figure out what we wanted to eat. And last time I was there, I had saw this Senegalese restaurant. And I was like, ooh, okay, I know that's there. And I've seen this here before. Um, so I finally was like, well, I, it wasn't me. Someone in the group was like, hey, do you want to go to the Senegalese restaurant? And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad someone had the courage to finally bring up this restaurant and like they want to go. Like, yes, yes, yes. Because sometimes like you just don't want to roll the dice on a restaurant. You, you know, you might see it all the time. You might pass by, but it's like, do I really want to go in there and see if it's good? Like there's restaurants, I've, I've mentioned it before. Um, there was like a Indian Nepalese restaurant. It had been, been, by, been near me since like, you know, for years. Never been, her good things. Just never took the time. Finally went in there. Loved it. it was so yummy. Uh, needless to say, this place was also very good. So let me let me see. Let me get my. Let me see if I can find the name of it. I like to give credit where credit is due. Daru Salam African Halal Restaurant. So it was amazing. Uh, what I got was a shawarma, which was the first uh, time I've gotten shawarma before. So I was like, yes, okay, we're finally crossing this off the list. And then I got fried plantain chips. Price is also really good. I feel like I paid for that. It was like 15 bucks or so. So that was really good. Really yummy, yummy, yummy. Uh, my friend, she got lamb dibby. And it was lamb and onions. And had this sauce. The sauce was so good. Had me doing the dance. <laughs> it was so yummy. So that's how I started my night. We were good. I was getting some drinks. It was fun. Then... Another homie went to Bridges, had the vegetable lo mein, didn't finish it. That came to me. Munch, 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 munch. Then, you know, still hanging out, still doing some drinking. Go to Classic Junkers. It's a junker situation. Slow night, which actually I liked a lot. It's it's nice to just hang out and you can actually like watch what's playing. They had like the wedding singer playing. It was chill. It was nice. Vibes were tight. And there was free pizza. So we wound up getting pizza anyway. It was such a full circle moment. I was very happy and probably ate too much, but that's okay. I feel like my weekends are still kind of my cheat time. You know, we'll get back to a regimented schedule because there, there's part two. There's more food. There's more food. <laughs> so earlier I had like did a tweet or reached about like being broke as fuck and one of the homies, shout out to Kyle, he was like, yo, we need to get some food. Let's make that happen. And I was like, what? Oh, my God. So Kyle and also my other homie, Taylor, we went out to the Blue... Actually, Taylor, friend of the show, been on the podcast before. You know, you know. Um, so we went out to the Blue Goose, and they both split for me. They both, they both fed me. It was so nice. Uh, we had, uh, what was it, potato... Yeah, potato skins. This motherfuckers was loaded. It was yummy. Then what else? I got pretzel sticks, which are also very good. I will say it was like three big sticks. And I'm always like, I like the number four. Maybe that's just me being weird. But I like four, especially if I'm going to pay like about 10 bucks. I feel like four is a good number. Even though these were pretty big. Like I, I was I was satisfied with them. But four would felt good. But they were yummy. And that's really all I care about. Uh, I feel like my my judging a restaurant by its pretzel sticks feels fine. I feel like that's like a solid litmus test because it's like it's it's not hard to make a pretzel stick. I feel like, but then again, it, the more work that goes into you making a pretzel stick or a pretzel with the cheese, or if you have like a really good beer cheese, ooh, the, 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 I, I don't know. It's important to me. I feel like it's a good measure of a restaurant, and plus it's just yummy. So yummy, so good. 
<laughs> I'm gonna slowly become a NBC uh, TikTok uh, streamer. TikTok. I'm gonna become a NBC podcaster. How about that? <laughs> That'd be terrible. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to talk about me, myself? I no. I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and do our classic startup. Oh, yeah. Also, when I was at the Blue Goose, um, I had this hazy IPA that was pretty gummy. It was good. So add that because beverages are important. Granted, I say that, but usually when I go out, I mostly drink water. That's usually my base nowadays because I'm like, I just don't feel like paying for a drink. Uh, unless I'm buying, like, unless I'm going to a place to actively drink the beer there and I want something to, like, soak up the alcohol, then the strategy is a little bit different, you know, kind of invert it. But it just depends on where I'm at, what I'm doing. All right. To the news uh, from the New York Post. You know, I love the New York Post. Great, wholesome journalism. <laughs> no, I, I, I felt like this was just good for the update that I wanted to talk about. Uh, Travis King told officials he wouldn't return to America nearly a year before fleeing to North Korea. So just an update. I did wind up finding out kind of the incident that landed Travis King in the situation of, be, you know, being like, oh, I'm going to get shipped back home to get dishonorably discharged. And then he was like, you know what, I'm going to actually plan B, take that tour and uh, never look back. <laughs> but American soldier Travis King had showed signs of possibly defecting from the army nearly a year before he fled into North Korea, North Korean territory, telling military officials while serving in South Korea that he would not return to post or America. Uh, the 23-year-old was the first soldier in decades to defect to North Korea when he bolted across the border on Tuesday. Uh, literally, this man said, ha, 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 and he just dipped. And, you know, people saw it happening because he was one of, I believe, like, 43 people on this tour. And he just bolted. And... <laughs> You know that 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 was that that's all she wrote. But I mean, granted, he we don't know the fate of him yet in terms of like is he being tortured? Is anything going on? I, I have no idea. I don't feel like speculating or anything like that. I, if if I do find out, obviously I'll definitely be talking about it. But uh, in terms of, I believe what happened was he had went off base, and then let's see if I can find it. But then he wound up going into a city in South Korea partying being like you know pretty aggressive the cops wind up getting called he then is you know forcibly i believe, believe put in a cop car and he is you know doing damage to the cop car i think it winds up being about like three thousand dollars no about four thousand dollars three thousand nine hundred fifty dollars in damage to a south korean uh police car and that was in october so for those actions he was you know Facing like, hey, you're going to get, you know, discharged dishonorably, which is obviously no good. Uh, I mean, granted, it's not a death sentence or anything like that, but it's definitely not a good thing to have on your jacket. You want to have an honorable, honorable discharge. That's definitely like, okay, cool. You know, we left on good terms. Everything's on the up. You know, this is an honored service member. Dishonorable, it's like, oh, what's, what's going on here? What's, what's the reason for that? Now, that being said... I don't know if this was just something that was like a buildup for him. I know it said uh, King's uncle, Carl, Carl Gates, said that his nephew had been breaking down over the February death of Gates's six-year-old son. Let's see. Uh, my son was on life support, and when my son passed away, Travis started being reckless and crazy when he knew my son was about to die. So, I mean, I don't know if if that was something that was like maybe a big break for him that really, you know, maybe sparked this or maybe this is like a, 
a trending thing for him. I don't know. That, that, that's not who, who, who can say it's not for me to speculate, but I did, you know, say earlier, I thought maybe like, oh man, this could have been some really fucked up depraved shit, but it does turn out that it's just, Hey, he got really belligerent at a club I think more or less, it seemed like he kind of went AWOL. Like, I don't think he was supposed to have gone out. I think he left his post and essentially was apprehended and then, you know, got more belligerent in a cop car. And, you know, maybe he just said, you know what? I'm out of options. I'm just going to go to North Korea. He, he, he. <laughs> Could not be me. I don't know. I, I, I would take my chances back in the States. Let's see. Not that, you know. No, no, I, I, I wouldn't. I'm, I'm just going to say it. I'm just saying it. <laughs> well, take me back to the Imperial Corps. <laughs> From CBS News. Man who ambushed Fargo officers searched kill fast area events where there are crowds, officials say. The heavily armed man who ambushed Fargo police officers investigating a fender bender last week likely had a bigger and bloodier attack in mind, with at least two fairs taking place at the same time in and around North Dakota's largest cities. Mohammed Barakat killed one officer and wounded two others in a bystander before a fourth officer shot and killed him. Uh, this took place on July 14th. Uh, let's see. Over the past five years, Barak... Or, yeah, Bar Bearcats, not Barack. Barack! Bearcat seven, uh, 37 searched the internet for terms including kill fast, explosive ammo, incendiary rounds, and mass shooting events. Uh, let's see. But perhaps the most chilling search was for area events where there are crowds, which on July 13th brought up a news article with the headline, Thousands enjoy first day of downtown Fargo Street Fair. So there was a couple of fairs that were like within miles of each other that potentially this guy who was pretty much armed to the teeth. They said he didn't have like an actual like like body armor vest or anything like that. But he did have like a vest that he could just like that had fill, was filled with magazines. Like he was ready to go. It looks like he had gotten into a fender bender. And, and I guess instead decided like, oh, I'm just, since this has happened, I'm going to make this the, the scene where I'm going to make my stand. I don't know. And it's not looked like he had any kind of religious ties or anything like that. Like, it looks like this is like a kind of a lone wolf situation. But, you know, the cops get there and he just starts shooting at him. He starts firing, uh, you know, puts down, I believe, a couple of them up to three and then I think the there was one guy who was finally able to um, take him down. But the rifle that uh, Bearcat had had a binary trigger that allowed it to fire so rapidly that it had sounded like an automatic weapon. A binary trigger is a modification that allows a weapon to fire one round when the trigger is pulled and another round when it is released. In essence, doubling a gun's firing capacity. So yeah, the three officers who were shot had no time to react and fell in rapid succession. Uh, he also shot a fleeing. He also shot and wounded a fleeing woman who was Carly Coswick, who had been involved in the fender bender. Like this almost just feels like a GTA scene or something. It's very very wild. But um, yeah, Jake Whalen, who was thirty or 20, sorry, he was twenty three. He served in Iraq and Afghanistan with the Minnesota Army National Guard. Uh, he was killed. And then Andrew Dottis and Tyler Hawes were wounded. Um, man. Also, they were new recruits. Wallen and Hawes were new recruits. That, that always sucks when you hear that story, huh? Like, they literally are just, like, fresh out of... Um, now, they were still undergoing field training. And it's like, here's some, um, you know, actual time on the ground and... Boom, 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 boom. It's fucked up. It's it's, it's fucking sad. Uh, let's see here. Is there anything else I really wanted to pull? No, it's it's just kind of a bummer situation. Uh, I mean, it's it's not new. It's not surprising. Sadly, you know, uh, I don't have to even get on the tangent here and just kind of move on. But um, 
This this one this is a story that I'm about to talk about. It's just it's just annoying to me. It it really is a nothing burger of a story. It is what it is, but it just fucking irritates me that the conversation now has shifted to to this. So let's let's just get into it. NPR. In and out burger bans employees in five states from wearing masks. It's like, yeah, shoes on the other foot now, brother. I don't I don't know. I don't know what this this is a yee ass nonsense. But uh, In-N-Out Burger, a popular fast food chain, will soon ban its employees in five states from wearing masks, emphasizing the importance of customer service. They also try to emphasize that this is a safety thing, and I see, I, I don't see it. I don't see how that, that, that computes, <laughs> but okay. Uh, but starting August 14th, In-N-Out employees in, the, in those states who want to wear a mask must have a valid medical note exempting him or her from this requirement. And this is a company memo. Uh, those who wear masks for medical reasons must wear a company provided N95 mask. So you can't wear anything that you feel like is a better mask or just more effective or efficient. It's like, no, we have this. I'm sure it has like their logo or, logo or something on it. You gotta wear these. These only if you have your note, <laughs> which is crazy that you have to do this. Now the states are Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, Texas, and Utah. Our goal is to continue to provide safe and customer-centric store and support environments that balance two things that In-N-Out is known for, exceptional customer service and unmatched standards for health, safety, and quality, the memo says. Now, I've never been to In-N-Out. I would like to, actually. I still want to, even though they're on this fucking hoot and holler, hoot and nanny. They um they have this uh very much a conservative religious bent to them. They're one of those stores where it's like, oh, look on the cup or look on the bag. There's a proverbs reference here. Oh, lean on on your own understanding. Woo. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck it says. I'm paraphrasing. Whatever. But it's that kind of nonsense that really gets the you know the the Bible thumpers going. So they really judge up. They really play to it. Uh, I guess during COVID, they were really, like, anti the whole vibe. But at the same time, they did at least abide by the guidelines in terms of posting, like, hey, you have to be vaccinated to come in, you know, the establishment, stuff like that. But they didn't really enforce it. That's not something that I really feel like is a huge gripe to me, especially hindsight, whatever. I'm not bent or pressed about it. But the idea of saying, like, hey, we're going to make you feel more uncomfortable, more unsafe to work here because we don't want you to wear a mask. You're just fucking up the vibes. You're harshing it up and we don't like it. You know, move these burgers with your mouth out. Now, don't get me wrong. I can understand at least the point of like, oh, maybe it's hard to hear people through a mask. And since you don't have to wear one, we would like you not to wear one. But that just feels so stupid to say and put a a period on that kind of sentence. Uh, That being said... I, I just feel like you should be allowed to wear a mask. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. We live in these times. Like, no one is forcing you to wear a mask. They they just want to wear one so they feel better. They feel potentially a little bit safer, you know? And, and people are so quick to want to argue with this logic or this sentiment. But it's just like, why? Why? It doesn't do you any damage. It doesn't hurt you. It, it, it does not hurt you at all. It, it's so confusing to me. But, um... Uh, granted, this is a policy. I imagine if it gets maybe too much blowback or anything like that, maybe they change it, switch it up. But um, I just think it's silly. I think it's fucking stupid. Stupid. And um, yeah, whatever. Boo. Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes with that fucking shake. Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, more things I'm mad about. But I'm going to take a break. I'm going to de-stress. Mask off. <laughs> This is from ABC uh, 5 or Channel 5 News, Cleveland, whatever. Proposed Ohio bill, <coughs> excuse me, 
Proposed Ohio bill banning drag shows may have wide ranging impact on theater performances. Now for me, this is ringing, ringing alarm bells. It's very suspicious. It's very familiar to the Tennessee drag bullshit. Um, so I figured, hey, I didn't want to let the week close without talking about this shit. But a proposed bill meant to limit drag performances has wide ranging impacts on the entire theater community, possibly banning famous and celebrated musicals from being put on, according to performers in Northeast Ohio. It's also just completely infringing on the rights of people who just want to have a drag lifestyle, who just want to live their life. You potentially have to worry and live in fear of getting 18 months in prison. Like, what? Like, it's it's fucking bullshit. So, um, let's see. Um, drag just, drag just means dressing in the opposite gender. It doesn't mean anything sexual, doesn't mean anything salacious. That was from artistic director Scott uh, Spence. But a new bill introduced to Ohio House makes Spence fear he may need to shut down uh, future productions. If you're trying to expose our children to obscenity in the state of Ohio, expect to be placed in prison. This is state representative Josh Williams. Uh, Fucking boo. Um, But um, Williams introduced House Bill 245, which prohibits adult cabaret performances in locations other than adult cabarets, which includes nightclubs, sex shops, or dirty movie theaters. Um, yeah, this is going to help and, and save the, the children from from what? I, I don't know. <laughs> um, Ohio has a statute regarding performances that are harmful to juveniles or obscene. This used to just apply to strippers and topless dancers. Now the lawmakers added a provision for people who exhibit a gender identity that is different from the performer's or entertainer's gender assigned at birth using clothing or makeup. Like, I I just don't... And they, they try to act like, oh, this will have no problems. Like, even though we're painting with this wide brush... This, this is fine. And it's like, what about, like, certain shows? You're saying we just can't do them now? And it's like, no, no, no. Like, as long as they're not, like, doing something that's, like, sexually provocative or something like that, they try to, like, say, well, in this example you're saying, you would be fine. But it's like, you don't know that. And it's just you saying that. Like, at the end of the day, in practice, this could go exactly as bad as we think it will. Now, granted, they do reference, though, the Tennessee bill that I talked about earlier, a very similar law in Tennessee was struck down by a federal court, deeming it unconstitutional for infringing on free speech. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I hope that this kind of shit just gets shot down, that it doesn't, you know, m- you know matriculate into becoming anything real. But um, it, it's frustrating to hear that this shit is happening, you know, in, in the state that you live in. Yeah, if you're me, that's, that, that's just how I feel. Like, it, it sucks to know that you see one conservative state do one thing and you almost know you feel it in your bones that like up to six to eight months later you're going to be seeing that in your state or your state's trying to be original and quirky and cute and just come up with some draconian ass shit it's like it's just so dumb it's so stupid um but um you know hopefully I, i can come up with some more good news for you that's the plan that's the hope that's the goal that's the scheme But uh, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being a friend. And hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love ya. Bye-bye. Mwah.